The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Arrakis, found out beyond, near the very edge of the Imperium. It is the sole source of the spice melange. The once-nothing cannabis sector has been thrust onto the main stage. The spice has made fold space technology possible, with the Butlerian Jihad over, and the distrust of thinking machines still lingering on the mouths of every Imperial citizen. This is a godsend, a blessing of the highest order. House Moritani was gifted fiefdom control over the planet once, but the current emperor has stripped the house of its former glory, choosing instead to raise up House Galloway. Some of the houses of the Lanzrad have quietly disputed the new choice, and though smiles are ever present around the emperor, Behind his back, a plot has been set in motion that will test not just the position of this newly raised house, but the allies and enemies they've made along their climb. This is a story of intrigue. This is a story of sacrifice. This is the story of Dune. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to McStabber Studios, Dune, Blood Soaked Sands. It's all yours. You got, you got it right this time. You're getting better Once. at this. Once. I got it right. One time. <laughs> hey, look, uh, my grandmother got it once, right once. Once. <laughs> once, Johnny. Uh, your last name's an adverb. So welcome, everybody, to Dune, Blood Soaked Sands. I am the Ravnos Archon. I'll be your storyteller this evening. It is an honor and a privilege, as always, to sit with these amazing people. And before we get started, let me let them introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I am Rylin Dare, also known as Mama McStabber in Twitch chat, and I am playing Reverend Mother Eovius Della Alasan. I am Juni Van Esch, and I am playing the Fremen known as Terra. I am Alexion Star all over the internet, and I will be playing Antares Valeria, the aristocrat who definitely is weighing over his head. And of course, I am Shanky McStabber, playing the totally not sus, totally above board Mintat Hakeem Dujin. Last we left off. The guild highliners that dropped off the Harkonnen ships had folded space and disappeared. The one highliner that brought uh, House Galloway and House Valeria to Arrakis and is picking up House Moritani is still in orbit, but it has moved further away. There is a ring of ships, freighters, and the like that have created a ring around the uh, rocky plateau that Arakeen sits on. And we got to see a little of, uh, because of lack of a better phrase, the room full of idiots uh, and what situation actually befell House Galloway to kind of put them uh, between a rock and a hard place. Uh, and that is Brand Galloway, Felder's younger brother, um, and his one night of indiscrepant, uh, rampant, uh joviality we'll say uh but that put him with an heir to house carino uh which they have used to barter their way into arrakis uh we got to see a little bit of the situation the uh Hakeen met with uh aguri biles the bennett Lalax master uh, that is on Arrakis. They got to see a, a declaration by Gabbard Harkonnen, the Earl that will become Duke of the House and the husband of Eovis' daughter, um, wanting 30% uh, to stop his blockade. And 
then we got to see a little bit of Thera's uh, training as she easily dispatched two assaultants that were looking to kill uh, Antares. And speaking of Antares, he got a little bit of a surprise when he confronted Rena and found out a little bit about where she actually comes from. Uh, but we left off with all of you meeting the next morning. Antares has pulled Rena aside. Thara and Della have uh, talked to see whether or not her mother is still alive. Uh, and although the uh, Eovis was pushed out of the other memory that the Fremen women have access to, uh, the Sayadinas at least, uh, there's no real knowledge about where she is, but she is alive. But all of you are gathered. How would you like to spend your day? I don't have anything special to do for this day because in the prep, gathered what I can carry, what I need. The rest is on uh, Thara over there. She will pass out the still suits. She will pass out um, from kits. Show them how to properly wear a still suit. Show them how to properly walk in the sands because the sands walks is most important. Tell everyone that they should not use shield whatsoever in the desert. And proceed to get them all prepped up and ready and teach them how to use the still suit in the most optimal weather, optimal way possible and show them how to drink from it. A group of Fremen have come to take uh, Barand, his wife, uh, Thalder's children, Barand's children, out into the secret caves among them and switching over from that group uh, to yours is Vera Hentuck, the judge of the change. And she is excited to see that all of you are still alive. My mental thought on that one is no thanks to her. Uh, but she comes over. Uh, so we're going into the sands. Is everyone mentally prepared for that? I don't know. I can only teach them so much. Are you all ready? Yes. As so, much as we can possibly be, I suppose. Yes. I have three other Fremen to go with us. Is that going to be enough? Is it ever enough? She looks up at the ships. I thought so at one point. Well, I guess now we have to turn around and show them what we can do. We are overly underestimated. It is time now to turn the tide. Understood. It doesn't take long with the Fremen's help to navigate the tunnels and to get to the edge of the Arakeen Plateau. And at this point, the sense of cinnamon starts to hit hard here on the actual sand, the spice hits hard. And although spice is a part of everyone's life, here it is intrusive. It is everywhere. There's no choice here. The spice is among you. And about a hundred or so yards away from the plateau, you see one of the Fremen jam something into the sand, and you start to hear a rhythmic thump, 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 thump. And Vera looks at the off-worlders with a smile. This is going to be interesting. She'll make sure she walks offside, offside of that. 
after a moment, the hairs on your arm start to raise, static starts to feel itchy on your clothing, on anything that isn't part of the still suit. And the air starts to taste ionized. And you can see in the distance just the, the kind of wave over wave of sand being pushed. And there is this massive maw that comes up out of the sand. And this, for a lot of people, is their first interactions with a sandworm. The video feeds, the, the video uh, logs don't do it justice. This thing is massive. It is easily, with its maw straight open, 18, maybe 16 feet in diameter. This thing could eat an ornithopter if it really wanted to. And you see the Fremen and Vera just rush over and almost like a well-oiled machine, they start to dig their hooks into the side and pop open a couple of the frills and you start to see the worm turn. And as they do, they start to release more of their rope and they call over to you to join them. The Reverend Mother does so immediately. Run, hurry, let's go. Yeah, I'm already there. <laughs> okay, so climbing up. Climbing up is going to be an interesting roll. Uh, I'm going to let you earn some momentum because you are at the, at the halfway point. So I'm not going to have a difficulty over zero, uh, but it will be a move roll. What do you think you'd like to pair that with? I'm going to wait until they go first, because mm -hmm. I think I'm going to use uh, data analysis and make it an understanding role. Oh. I'm going to watch how they do it and learn uh, what not to do by watching the rest. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so what does then Terrace want to pair his move um, with? I, can I pair it with duty because I absolutely need to stay alive to solve <laughs> all of this and fix up everything? <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So that's going to give you uh, an eight for duty, a four for move. So your target number is 12. Yeah, my, I'm using duty as well because it's, I must survive to be of use to the house. So my target's okay. going to be 13. Okay. I will be using move and faith. Oh. Because the way must be paved for the future of humanity. Okay. I will also be utilizing my prana bindu conditioning. Oh. Fancy. <laughs> uh. Never mind. I re well, hang on. Oh. Okay, so if I can re-roll a single d20, do I count a success on that? Or is it just if I don't get a success? You can roll whether or not you have successes. Okay. So if you, if you have one success and one non-success, you can re-roll the non-success. Okay, okay. Well, I got two okay. successes. I got a one and a two. Okay. <laughs> okay, so three successes. Yeah, technically, right? technically three. <laughs> uh, Rena has a move of four. She's going to use power. So that's seven. That gives her a target number of 11. Uh, 17 is terrible, but nine is worth it. So she got one success. So she, she stumbles a little bit, but it's not climbing isn't anything new to her. Mm -hmm. I get a five and a seven. Okay. So you're I fine. I have a question. If I see Rena and I see how she does, how she gets on, can I use constantly watching or put theory into practice to kind of notice there's a familiarity to it. Um, I will say I got a three. I use duty and move. I had um, yeah, one you, and you're, nine. you're from and I wasn't going to make you roll to get on the worm. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I know you know your way around the worm, girl. I mean, hey, Cold we quotes. just don't need it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because Rena was taken before any of this training set in, there isn't anything 
that would give it away to give you a role. Okay. So she just looks as clumsy as uh, a non Fremen would. Okay. But when she gets up on the worm, there's there is a kind of confidence about her. Okay. I got a an eleven and a thirteen, which makes it very good that I watched how the other people got on first, because otherwise <laughs> I'd have been in deep shit. Yep. Uh, I assume everyone wants to bank the momentum that they've earned. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Or do we yes. like to establish some? Well, I mean, who's in the scene? Because the Reverend Mother alone got three successes, so that puts that gives you all the momentum you can carry. Um, actually, I'm thinking on something. Okay. Never mind. I'm checking my list here. Check it twice, Sandy. Yep. <laughs> mm. Double checking if I want to use some of it to, you know, it's not going to help our momentum, but you know, I might want some stuff. Uh, yeah. I just got to find where it is in here. Yeah, everyone got at least one success, so. I will mm-hmm. take the extra two of my successes to make mm-hmm. an asset. Um, the still suit is now mine. Okay. Oh. I was totally going to ask for it back. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were, but I'm going to add it to my asset list. <laughs> there you go. Now, mm. remember that you can only have five assets. I don't think anybody is close to that. Um. Mm-hmm. No, this is my this is my fifth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Five. Technically, you can only have mm-hmm. five active assets. Oh. Let me correct that. Okay, so, thank I you. Have, thank I you. have five on me right now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah, want to bank some uh, when you don't mm-hmm. need them, that's totally acceptable. Mm, I'm thinking here. Uh, would it be to create a temporary asset to say that we found some people of my battalion to take with us? You could. That would require some of the Fremen to summon another worm. Mm. Nah. My dude, we only have so much worm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, um, yeah, because Arrakis has so little worm. Listen. No, do you know how hard it is to contact one? Jesus. He doesn't need to <laughs> prove that he's used his worm before, okay? <laughs> it's a learn he can write it first. I'm going to use... Because there's a shortage on worms on Arrakis. <laughs> I'm actually going to use my two that I got. I mm-hmm. want to add a trait to the scene. Okay. Of a sandstorm rolls in to a, that obscures... Mm. Us from the uh, any satellites or nice. or viewing. Good use. Mm. Good use. So we're riding on the sandworm as a sandstorm rolls in. Uh, Tara will make sure will make sure that everyone is secure and knowing how to hold on to said worm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there. There's a moment where the the worm is massive. It is easily 60, 70 feet long. And you start to worry about what kind of trail this is going to leave. And you can see in the distance, a couple of ornithopters have turned in your direction. And right as they are within distance to ID any of you, you can hear the howling of the wind. You can smell this uh, pungent cinnamon in the air. And the sandworm himself starts to just pick up the pace and he creates this massive upheaval of sand and dust. And with the wind whipping around you, it starts to create this natural barrier. It's almost like the planet itself is trying to help you. And you see the Fremen start to wrap themselves their faces they start to bring down uh goggles vera in particular brings down her goggles and there is an excitement to them and i put on my sibis hood to keep from sand beating my eyes to death is it just a random face generator or do you have uh, saved faces that you use. I have some saved, but I'm not using any of those. Those are uh, specific use. It's just random person. Okay. 
But since it's attached to my hood, when I pull my hood up, it's part of the hood setup. Yep. Yeah. So every so often, a facial feature will change on Hakeem. Uh, skin color, eye width, eye height, nose, things like that. Uh, it's discerning at first, but with the wind, it's, it's not an issue. And you travel on the worm for what seems like forever uh, until finally the wind starts to die down, the sand calms, and there is this gold, yellow, orange ocean in front of you. And you can just see this sandworm cutting through and you can hear the the inhuman roar uh, that it lets out and after a moment you hear it echoed and for the first time in an off-worlder's life, you see a pod of worms. And they're all kind of smaller than this other worm. It, this almost feels like this is an alpha worm, and this is its wolf pack, for lack of a better term. And in the distance, one of the other Fremen says something they all nod, and Theron recognizes that as rocks, siege, home. And they get to the point where they slow down, they bring the worm around, and they slowly unhook their hooks, and very carefully, very methodically and very caringly they make sure that they haven't hurt the worm in any way shape or form and there's a reverence as this monstrosity again electrifies the air around you pulls at the very hairs on your arms and on your head the the ionization left in the back of your throats is a new sensation. And you don't, at first, understand how anyone could get used to this. But they sit there, kneeling, almost thanking it for what it just did for them. But you are at a siege. As we go in, I pull my hood. I don't want to upset people with a changing face constantly. A couple of Fremen pop up out of the rock outcroppings. You had not seen them before. They, it is like they have just apparated. Um, but they wave and they get a signal back from the Fremen that are there with you. And Vera kind of turns to Thara. Well, this is it. Let's see what happens. I want to do a uh, data analysis role real quick. Uh, understand in truth. I want to see if I can guess based on the speed of the worm in the general direction we set out, if I can at least understand where I am in, on the planet. I'm a mentad. I need to know these things. Sure. My um, difficulty, or my target would be 15. What's my target difficulty? Is be 15. Because of the sandstorm that, that was a help to you, uh, I'm going to say that the standard difficulty would be 2, so I'm going to use a threat to raise it to 3. That's fine. I'll take it as a 3, considering I've got a target of 15 with 2 dice. I'll take it as a 3. Sure. And you're using your specialty, so you yep. stand to... Mm, I got two 13s. Oh, it's 13 night. So I didn't get enough to do it, but that's fine. Okay. It was just an outside. I was trying to analyze it. 
Yeah. Yeah. The given the sandstorm, um, you would have easily have figured out where you were, the distance traveled. You calculate that you've you've been on the worm for no more than four hours, easily three minimum. Um, so you have an idea as far as an equatorial ring around the planet, but you don't have an actual yep. That'll circle. work for now. So I'll accept that. I, limited data. With the data I have, I can only make the analysis I can. Yep. But the two that... will, will get to Thera and while they are riding, and when he's going to get to Thera and say, hey, does that count as riding the worm? Yes, it counts as right in the worm, but the next time you'll have to do it on yourself with the maker's tools. And do it yourself to get on top of it. That is only if Shia Lut lets you. You better pray to him to see if he will let you do it. Hey, my inner 12-year-old is having a field day. Um, <laughs> the two Fremen guards uh, watch you climb up onto the siege rock hold and then they exchange greetings with everyone these are not familiar people to thera uh, but you know more or less by the outcroppings by the the way the rocks have formed here you kind of know what siege this is um, if you want to You've got five out of six momentum. If you want to roll to see if you remember the Siege's uh, Nuab's name, you could, or you could just go in. No, I'll, I'll, I will roll. What do I, what would you like me to roll? Okay. So that's going to be, I think, an understand roll or a discipline roll. Which one would you like? Now they're both fives to me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Perfect. Be honest. Uh, who are you gonna? What are you gonna pair them with then? Duty. Okay. For the tribe and for the siege. Sure. Uh, yeah. So you've got a difficulty zero, so you just gotta get one success. And that'll be more than enough. Okay. An eight and an eleven. Eight and eleven. Uh, the siege you remember is not run by a male it is actually run by a female uh and her name is lertha okay lertha is an older sayadina um she is usually the one that people go to uh, she is known in this part of the dune sea as far as having not prophetic but very spot on uh, feelings about a person's path which is why she's kept her siege uh, safe and hidden for the most part um, only people that have been to her know how to get back to her. Uh, and now you kind of understand Vera's apprehension. But you're brought into the mountain, into the small tunnels, and you descend, you all descend for what must be 10 or 15 minutes and there is a massive collection of tunnels and nooks uh some look to be natural some look to have been worn uh into creation mind as a sort uh, and there's a community here there's a whole central unit where you can see that there is a fire there is something being cooked you can smell the 
the scent of something not meat, uh, but everyone kind of turns and immediately you can hear the whispers and the kind of subtle but not subtle pointing at all of these off-worlders, all of these non-Fremen that have suddenly come into the siege. And immediately one of them points at the Reverend Mother and draws his blade. Sarah draws hers. Your Kindle or mine. your Chris knife? I draw mine. Mm-hmm. My Kindle, not mm-hmm. my Chris knife. Okay. The Reverend Mother doesn't draw any blade and just looks at him. Enough. Don't do this now. He looks in your direction and in the Fremen tongue. Bring your mother's assaulter into this haven. Why? This is not my mother's. This is not my mother's assault. But I have been with this woman all time. I can vouch for her. The person you are looking for, imposter, is a cake and shape. It is imposter, but it's not who you think. Where is my mother? She's with the hurt. She's then, not well. She survives, yes. Call it that, yes. Where's my father? That we don't know. Then you should be finding him, shouldn't you? He begrudgingly lowers the blade. I'll put mine back, but I won't hide it back under my robe. It'll. I'll make sure the robe is thrown back so that it's plain on my, on my hip. All right, cowboy. And he goes this way. Come. She will tell you things. He turns back around and he's just like, no, no, only you. They stay. Then I need to take the other side, Dana. They have to make understanding. You know this. They need to see. They need to know. You put her in another room, then I take this in. They need to see what happened. You know this is the way we have to do things. Father would say so. One of the flaps moves from the adjoining cave, and you see an elderly Fremen woman easily about early 60s to late 60s, just in those, in just the beginning of of winding down. She just kind of comes out, prodding along with a little walking stick. She's maybe five, two, hunched over. She looks like she might've been five, six, full, fully erect. I know what I said. Uh, but she comes over, she's got the blue within blue, beautiful, lightly tan, kind of like a very creamy coffee latte skin color. And there is this very raspy voice like years and year, decades of smoking. And she just kind of looks over at Thera and she just smiles. Ma'am. Come. Of course. Good. Good. Just the way, or are we? What is up? You have brought back 
the lost child. The lost child. And she uses her stick to point at Rena. I'm confused. Enlighten me, please. You you have not seen. You are so close. Not seen what? I've been a little preoccupied in, in several different things. Maybe a little bit of a cue up would be appreciated. She hobbles over to you and she very gently puts her walking stick on your neck and just kind of motions until you get really close to Rena's face and you see the hint of blue within blue. Oh, Shailud. Well, I did not expect it. She'll look right over at Antilles and we're like, you were trained by a Fremen. This makes a bit more sense now. Uh, I guess that secret didn't last long, huh? And I look at, and, and Terrence will look at Rena with a smile on the corner of his mouth. And she comes over and the old Sayadina just grabs Rena's hand and kisses them. Oh, he had been missed, daughter. Today's happy day. And Rena just starts crying. This is the, the most emotion you've ever seen this woman have. And everybody's and just will, in awe. And Tyrus will take a couple of steps and put his hand on her shoulder. Just want to be close to her in that moment. And a majority of the Fremen from the siege come over and they also start to put their hands on her <laughs> shoulders, on the top of her back. There, there's a reverence to them in this moment. The gentleman that stopped you looks over at you there uh, kind of taps you with this the hilt of the sword do you want to see your mother or do you want to yes. stay here with this i need to see my mother now i i need to have this sayadina come with me alone your mother wishes it then we will allow the off-worlder. Fine. It takes you back to where the sick and injured are. You can see a small pit uh, that you recognize where they keep the baby sandworms. Uh, you can hear them kind of calling out, but they're trapped. He takes you, you can see that there's a few people that look injured. Uh, some are more grievous than others. Your mother has bandages around her midsection. But her eyes light up when she sees you. And there's a smile on her face. Are you, well, you're bandaged. Are you okay? I, I will leave you well, and her hands come up to your face. I have brought the other Sayadina with me. I know she, uh, I was with her all the time. I, I saw, I saw. I know you saw, and she says she saw. You, you both see different things I cannot, but I brought her here with two others. Well, apparently three others is a lost child. Yay me. I'm good for riding worms and finding children that were lost. I mean... If only you could have your own children. No, no, Mama. You know this is not going to be the way the Shahalulu wants it. 
keep talking if about it... writing worms and yet you don't find one to write. That is not the way you do things, Mama. You know this. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, it's only a childhood way. We've gone over this. I can't protect you and Papa if you two run around and pretend you're heroes. I mean, am I supposed to be the hero? You're making me look bad. I just have one long scar. That's it. I mean, I heard scars were cool. Well, I only have one. And look at you. And I don't even know where Papa is. I have been trying to find him, but he is difficult. I do not think that he is on the same thing. I will go back to our session. Look, did anyone, where did this person go that was trying to attack you? Into the sky, in a flying machine. The flying machine took them away? Did anyone come in that you did not know? No, there was a group that came in with Mark Duha, and when we sat down to eat, one of them had changed their face. This woman thought like the wind is hot. She had movements that were unnatural. She also hid machines with her, machines. tiny machines. And you see her holding her hand and just kind of creating this little pocket between her thumb and pointer finger, trying to show you how small the machines were, just like tiny, tiny machines. We have a man who is a, um, I, I'm bad with his name, I apologize. I call him the man computer because he calculates everything. He might know this thing. But mm. I want you to meet the Zaya Diana. I think you and her could come to an understanding and help us with all of this. Please. I brought this, um, ugh, I, I don't, he has a title called Earl, um, but he is, uh, he is fresh. He's not used to much of this. He has a, a comfortable life from what I understand from his ways in his planet. But he's got a kind heart and maybe we'll try to help. And then, you know, maybe we can find out what the hell is going on. He's part of a, they call it a minor house. She smiles coyly as she looks up at you. Is he handsome? I'm sorry, what? Is he handsome? I, I suppose. I don't know. I, never, I have been dodging laser fire. I have been trying mm. to put this thing together, trying to work on peace. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Trying to do connections, finding out what someone is killed. I really haven't looked to see if this man is handsome or not. Should, does this matter? It's just a question. Well, how about if you allow, because apparently I can't bring them back with me. How about if you allow either to come with me or I bring them back here? To help, help, me, help me up. I go to this other Sayadina. Uh, where, where, is your, where is your cane, Mama? Uh, it's over there. And she points and you can see just a few canes, a few walking sticks over there have been... Uh, carved out and created as necessity, kind of like crutches and whatnot. Fine, come and she will help her up and walk mm -hmm. her to her cane. Now look, you behave and be careful. You don't know what you're trying to do and trying to ask who is handsome or not. He probably has, from what I understand, he has been with many people and has gotten a reputation of being 
uh, a passer of women. So I, I think he might even try to swoon you off your feet, Mama. Oh, well, he, if there is an opening coming up, perhaps. Uh, but a good experienced man could do something for you. Mama, he has, he can hold a sword, but he doesn't know how to thrust with it very well yet. He's still learning. It's, that is unfortunate. You cannot teach thrusting. I mean, he's, he's learning how to handle things with, the, with his weapon. He's not as, um, shall we say, uh, not as good as I am with the sword. Oh, you are good with the sword, eh? You know I'm very good with the sword, Mama. Oh, You've apparently, seen. apparently. You are keeping oh, secrets you're from your mother. I would never keep secrets from you. And I know you see everything I do. Why would I keep secrets from you? You, you, As you always said, you had eyes in the back of your head. Why would I ever think of hiding things from you? You always find out. Of course, of course. Okay. Yeah, I take me to this Sayadina. Okay. Here's your walking stick, Mama. You lead her back out. Uh, the Fremen have been welcoming to the offworlders, uh, especially Rena. Uh, they've offered you some of their food that they're cooking. Uh, it is a steamed vegetable dish. Uh, you can see little jackrabbits, uh, mice kind of rocking around, hopping here and, here and there. You can hear them squeaking. Uh, the traditional Muadib, as they are known. Um, yeah, and there is will pass on the Muadib. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you would like to talk to any of them while Sarah and her mother have had this discussion, you are more than welcome to. Oh, absolutely. I'm Reverend, just, the Reverend Mother would be making conversation with anyone that wants to make conversation with and her. And I'm just using constantly <laughs> watching, which I'm going to roll before Reverend Mother gets started because, you know, yep. that Enjoy. lets me reduce the difficulty by two when I'm trying to detect danger and hidden enemies and that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, bring your difficulty down to zero then. Yep. And I'm going to use uh, data analysis. No, actually, no, I'm going to use strategy under battle. Because I think that fits a little better. It does. And it's not truth. It's going to have to be duty again. It's funny. Truth is my highest, but most of my shit's out of duty, not truth. You don't think it's power? Uh, no, I think it fits duty solely because I must survive to be of use to my house. That is one of my key drives. Okay. So, uh, you know. Because it fits the drive statement, you could use a... Uh... A determination point to turn one of your dice to a one if you wanted to. No, no. I, I think a 13 is a good enough number. Hopefully I don't keep rolling 13s all night. That's your difficulty, so. Well, that's pretty good because I got a 16 and a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two successes. Uh, it was a difficulty zero, so you got two over your threshold. How would you like to bank them? You got five out of six momentum. I'm going to put one in momentum. Okay. When I want to obtain information, uh, how hostile are they to? Well, given my paranoia, me. To you, they don't bat an eye. There is no hostility here. There's no one wanting to just strike out at you. But you do notice that all the males in particular have this aggressive, very defensive, very ready to strike at a moment's notice kind of look about them and they keep stealing glances at the Reverend Mother. Yeah. Well, she'll have to defend herself on that one. I've already made well, no, I've already no, she, made it clear. Trust me, she can. I made it clear when they drew blade that I was willing to draw blade. I think that's enough of my show of strength for now. As and it's Reverend, all yours. As the Reverend Mother sits down near the cooking area where the eating area, I guess you could say, where people are hanging out and eating. She actually mm -hmm. lowers her scarf down, and all the men standing around posturing can see there are streaks of gray in her black hair. 
She is not the, some young thing. The elderly Sayadina kind of looks over and smiles, one hand still kind of cradling Rena's hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and she just kind of furls her brow like she's trying to figure something out. And she looks at you. You, you have survived at the water, yes? Yes, Sayadina, I have. I have seen you in my dreams. Have you? You have brought my daughter back. Mm. For this, I can never repay you. You do not need to. I did not your, know she was yours. Your siege is under attack, yes, from the machine in the sky. Yes. This is why you've come? Yes. To protect the family that I serve. And you see that she takes her hand out of Rena's hands and puts it on her face very tenderly, very motherly. You have flashbacks of you with your own daughter. And she smiles at you. My siege will ally itself with you. It's the least we can do for this gift. Thank you, Sayadina. Oh, please, thank you. And the vegetables see, are delicious. <laughs> she smiles, uh, and you see Thara come out with a wounded older woman that has a familial resemblance to her. Careful, Mama, not too fast. Oh, no, no, please. I must show the handsome boy that I can still move. Oh, please, Mama. How about I, te how about I, I, I introduce you to the Zaydina and the other first before you go all swooning over the other one? Whatever you think is best. Wait, you're letting me think what's best now? Where are you? What have you done to my mama? It, it is about time that you are treated as an adult. Oh, I hope so. I've had them. I was, what, 30, 30 sons? I mean, you, you have brought them in home. It is a day to celebrate. Ah, true. Uh, mama, this is... <sighs> Reverend Mother... Are you buying this Della Alassan? <laughs> Please call me Della. I said that, right? Yes? You, you, you did well. Oh, good. <laughs> it is a pleasure to meet the mother of Thera. Oh, it is a pleasure to meet the woman that has protected her. I hope she has not been intrusive. Not at all. Baba. Honestly. But uh, this man here is Harkin Dolin. I said yes, correct? Close enough. Okay, I got that. Mm, she's she's call me she, leans over. she leans over, she's like, this is not handsome man. This is the this is the man computer one that calculates and is sees everything almost. I was not created to be handsome. And you see that she kind of looks at you for a moment. And as her eyes meet yours, you can see the blue within blue start to fade away. And you see her eyes become just a steel gray. And a voice comes through that is not hers. Ah. Akin Dujen. Finally. You are a hard man to pull aside. And as she finishes saying that, you hear a popping sound. The jaw dislocates and you see what looks to be this 
swarm of nano machines come towards you. And I think this is a good point to go to break. You rotten bastard. Okay. We will <laughs> see everybody in 10 minutes. Bye. Yeah. Be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We last left our group in a very interesting predicament. Uh, because uh, the Reverend Mother, Sarah, and Antares all see Sarah's mother sneeze. And there is an uh, excuse, you know, she wipes her face, her nose. Um, but for Hakeem, Hakeem sees this wave of swarm of nano assassin droids start to spew from her mouth her her eyes turn black as they roll into her head and the body kind of collapses towards you and you see this swarm start to just crawl its way towards you everyone else just sees a keen freeze I'm using, uh, I want to use my Twisted Mintad ability. Uh, nope. It's going to be battle under strategy and duty. Okay. And um, I mean, because I think it's real compared to everybody else, I'm going to give you one threat to give me a bonus die for my Twisted Mintad ability. So you think duty over truth? Yes. I must survive. Okay. Okay. We have so much momentum. <laughs> but... I want to use my twisted mintech because it actually gives me bonus momentum. You let him lead lead his life the way he wants. That's right. To. Oh, that was definitely worth it. Five, a three, and a fourteen. Okay. Now the fourteen don't help me, but nope. the five and the three definitely both do, which means I get a bonus momentum as part of my twisted mintech. So, and I was using my specialization, so that's two, four, five. That's five. Five successes on that. Yep. Uh, one I have to use for my Twisted Mintat, and I'm using that one for uh, the most effective way to destroy every single one of these nanobots coming at me. That's my first one. Uh, one I can put in the pool. Why not top it off? Your, your pool is topped off. Oh, shit. That gives me four? Four. Hmm. Now it's time to to break out some other parts. One okay. point I want to use to obtain information about the scene and situation. Have I ever seen or had this, heard of something like this before? Yes. There are specific nano assassins that can paralyze their target with um, mental images of... Fear or sublime, um, either or. They used to they're they're used to extremes, um, depending on on what message they're trying to drive. The second one, do I recognize the voice? The voice you have not heard in some time, not since you were uh, being prepared to be sold uh, gives me two left but it does belong to a master of uh, the Benetlelex named rear talk Gandal making a note of that just so I have it here mm -hmm. uh Let's create a trait with my last two. Okay. Uh, the trait is uh, pretty easy. Nobody else is moving. Analysis will immediately kick in. Nobody else is reacting. This cannot be real, but that's after I've done all this other calculations. That is my final calculation. The trait is that because nobody is moving, I know they can't be seeing this. There's a moment as Thera is introducing her mother to everyone where you all notice that Hakeen is 
stoic, frozen almost. And then there's a moment where you see smoke start to come out of one of his ears and a small robotic scorpion crawls out and starts to just fall apart on his face and on his shoulder. And as it does, you see him start to snap out of whatever he was in. But the swarm vanishes. Tara's mother is still standing there next to her. The jaw is not dislocated. Her eyes are regular, blue within blue, Fremen eyes. But everyone's attention is now on you. Are you okay, Arkin? No. Okay. But do you need a moment? No, continue. I am still able to calculate effectively. Okay. I didn't know you need water or something. It's the two pieces. And I'll just brush the bits of the thing off. Okay. And then go back to my twitch. My I've suddenly got my nervous tick again. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, Mama, this is the uh, uh, and there is. And you see, uh, as, she, as she's about to take your hand, uh, she has this big smile on her face. Uh, you hear a crack, muffled. But it is something that's very familiar to Hakeem. When an asset has failed, the Bennett Lilacs are merciless. And the eyes fade, the blue within blue starts to wash away. And you see, all of you see, Thara's mother collapse. Mama? She'll just drop down. To uh, I, I will. She was, uh, she was coming to me, right? I will try to hold her. And Thera's will try to hold her as she fall, falls in his arms. What? And since I was what using constantly watching, can I determine where that came from? Any chance of that? Uh, given who you're dealing with, there must have been a set of nano assassins within her. So there's no wound, no bullet wound or anything, just, okay. No. Then I will continue I just Paris watching. Yeah. And after, that? after a moment, as you, as Antares is kind of like holding her in his arms and, and trying to, to lower her into place, you can see the bandage start to move. And one of those little scorpions starts to crawl out, cutting its way from inside out. Um, I will take it into my hand, crush it, and toss it aside. Like, impulse reaction. Okay. The, the Reverend Mama. Mother is picking up the bits and pieces of these two devices. What's it, what, do do? what do we do I'm now? Trying to look. Um, have Antares ever heard red, um, Heard whispers of something that could resemble that. Oh, let's have you make an understand or discipline roll. Mm -hmm. Your choice. Um, uh, understand, perhaps. Okay. With my focus on house politics. Okay, there you go. That'll work. Okay. Um, cool. And, and I will buy one momentum since we're topped off. So. Yeah, so I'll bring you down to five. So what do you want to pair that with as far as the drive is concerned? Uh, how, are you, how are you angling this role? Uh, truth. I want to know, uh, I want to know who is, uh, I want to get to the bottom of who might be attacking us in so many fronts. Okay, I'll allow truth. Um, okay. <clears throat> So your truth is a seven. Your understand is five. So your target number is 12. Mm -hmm. um, this would be normally a difficulty two. So I'm going to use a threat to raise it to three. Okay. I will probably not do it. Uh, I will spend another momentum to roll four dice. So you're going to need two more momentum. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then. They get more expensive. Mm. Yeah, okay. No, 
Um, nope. Should I? Shouldn't I? It'll bring you to three out of six. Mm, I'm rolling three dice for three successes, or I'm That's gonna spend 12. two more momentum. Okay, so you're down to three. You got four dice. Mm -hmm. The is three. Your target number is twelve. Okay, the dice help me. I have a twenty, uh, okay. twelve, a four, and a ten. So, you got three successes, but you also have a complication now. Hmm. Uh, given that you were rolling, understand. We'll say that you are incredibly sure, hundred uh, percent, positive that the information you're about to get is completely true. Mm -hmm. You would you would stake your life, Rena's life, your sister's life, on this information being true. Uh, these assassin droids, nanobots. Um, uh, are the kind of thing that you would see a major house use during a war of assassins. These are a dime a dozen. Any house can, any major house can definitely afford something like this. If you but know it needs to, to be a major house. Yeah, and you have to know where to look. The Reverend Mother is also, now that she has these bits and pieces of these little bots in her hands, she's going to do a roll as well. Oh, <laughs> maybe into that memory? <laughs> yeah, we're going to use the memory to get me three successes. Um, and I am going to roll Understand and Power. Okay. Because of your other memory, your difficulty is going to be two, so you already have one over. Yeah, that's going to be two over because I got a six and a one. Actually, th three over. Yep. So three more. Three, three more, more on top one of the gives you four. Yeah. So you, you have four total. Um, I want to know a truth of these devices. Okay. So that's one for obtaining information. Mm -hmm. I want to alter the scene. Okay. That just before Thara's mother died, she whispered something that would give us insight into this. Okay. So that leaves you with one left. Bank it. Okay. So the truth of these items are that these are Ixian made. These are far, far into the realm of thinking machines. These are outlawed by the Balerian Jihad. Passing the events of the Balerian Jihad, at least. Um, these are not easily found. And the people who can get these are the scum of the earth. They are not uh, well-to-do. They are not running around in upper echelons. These are back alley, dark corners, secret whispers and passwords to even get near one of these people. The whisper that you get from her is not even her voice. It is the the voice that Hakeem heard in his delusion, uh, which is why I think the Reverend Mother picked up on it immediately. Um, it is a name, Piara June. These are black market Ixian. And extremely expensive. And exceptionally hard to obtain. These are banned. It had to be an extremely powerful house. 
to what acquire these. What was the name these. against GM? I'm sorry. The name you heard was Piara June. Thank you. Yep. I heard a voice from your mother, Thor. Was not her voice. It was a name. Piara June. That voice you heard would be Rear Talk Gamble, Master Rear Talk Gamble. And they kill my mother for it. To attempt to kill Hakeen. Why? What did you see, Hakeen? Nanobot assassins coming at me. If Hakeen had responded to that illusion, everyone in this siege would have turned blade to him. I would have killed a number of them before I was Mama. taken out. In here, I can use my shield. Mama did nothing to anyone. She was planted. They had intelligence that you were within the compound. They attacked your siege. They planted these devices inside your mother, made sure she survived. So that when you reunited with her, like fully bringing Hakeen with you, it would set him up. I would kill her, you when you came to her defense. Probably the first four over there who come to reach me. Eventually you would fall. Yes. I would kill with my shield a dozen before I fell. But most importantly, I would eliminate you and any hope House Galloway had of help. She uh, didn't deserve this. No, she did not. Deserve is not part of the calculation. It should be. Being human should be part of the calculation. No. Yes. Success is their calculation. Success is their measure. Success is all that matters. Then this is a war of assassins. This is beyond a war of assassins. You don't use these in assassinations. These are not something that should be used. Then point me where my sword will go and I will kill them for revenge. Who is Piara June? Um, storyteller, what do I do? Does that name ring a bell to anyone? Do I need to roll something or the, do I the only one that would have a hope of remembering who Piara June is is the Reverend Mother. Okay, then I the player does not know who this person is, so what do I roll for my character Correct. to remember? <laughs> Uh, you can dip into the other, other memory, other memory if you want to. Yeah, I will. Or if you want to try to just remember it, it will be, uh, based off of understand. No, we're going to go ahead and do just, she's already basically opened up the other memory for, for this whole, this scene basically. So she's going to close her eyes for a moment and lower her head slightly as she focuses okay. and she pulls it from the other memories. So it is going to be a standard difficulty of three. I'm going to use two threat to push it to five. Okay. That's two threes. Okay. So no success is over. You just got the five. Mm -hmm. Piara June was a Bene Gesserit sister who took the water of life and instead of using the Prana Bindu, she cheated and used Ixian technology to extend her life instead. She has since been pulled from the other memory. She doesn't exist there anymore. And she's a ghost. The fact that she, that her name has escaped Thara's mother's lips means that bad things are happening on Arrakis. 
Reverend Mother raises her head again and opens her eyes. She is a ghost. She was once of my order. When her trial happened, that is what we call drinking what you call the water of life. She cheated. How does one cheat that? She used band, and she holds up the device's technology to preserve herself instead of her own physical conditioning that we are trained for. She was purged from memory. Is this the person that killed my mother? I cannot answer that, but if she is on this planet, bad things are happening. And please, Thor, understand something. As long as you are calculating the human cost, you will lose. They won't calculate that. They will use only simple logic. Is the price worth the reward? To think otherwise Probably. is to give them the advantage, not yourself. How do you not weigh the human cost when you have only this to live with? They are not the ones doing it. They are not the ones at risk. The cost is paid by the tools, by the ones they use. Uh, Do not, yes, mm -hmm. very much. It's the way the universe works. Do not put that calculation. You will lose every time. That so is what, what That is what I am trained for. That is what we are trained for. This is all you do is just calculate the cost of living. No, I calculate the cost of success. And upon hearing those words, and Terry's will like lay down her, the Terry's mother head, and you would see, and Hakim would see the tears in, in, in Antares' eyes as he looks at Hakins and say, and that is why, and that is why people like you are advisors and not leaders. Correct. The members of the mother would That understand. is why, because that is not how you rule. That is not how you take decisions. No, Antares, that is how you survive. That is how you win. That is the purpose of the Mintet. Reverend Mother would understand, though we are different, she and I are alike in some ways. She understands sometimes hard choices are made. Sometimes things are sacrificed. Her order has done it for centuries. You, you have a goal. so much like my brother right now at his worst. It is the fact. And I will just get up and go to Rana. How many more will have to die until we find out what's hurting us like this? All of us, if we don't win. Uh, Antares is looking at Rena. He, he's yeah. totally ignoring Hakim right now. Yeah, he's and she nods, uh, looking her eyes darting towards him, and he she just he's unfortunately correct. There's an incredible amount of danger being thrust in this direction. Whether it's because of you, whether it's because of him, whether it's because of her, that almost all of you, and then she kind of looks at Thera, except for her, like all of you 
have something to lose. She was smiling, Rana, and she looked at me. She was like, it was so funny because she was looking like she was glad to meet me, even though we'd never met before. I never felt something like this. And then her neck just snapped right in front of me. The old Sayadina puts her hand on yours. And you know, this is your family too. We appreciate like, the, the loss of water that you are displaying, young man, but please, you must save this. You are, you are in the sands now. Listen to me, Antares. You will not survive this if you do not get rid of the naivety and the lack of understanding the universe. This is how it is. You can wish for better. You can want for better. Pure logic says this is what it is. You cannot change the facts. If you wish to survive, you will harden up. You can mourn your dead when it's over. You can mourn all the dead when it's over. But until you win, you must do what has to be done. I will do what has to be done to save House Galloway. When Harkin says, uh, you must do what has to be done, Vera just picks her mother up and walks her to where he has to be processed. And I think and at this point you see something different. Hakeem is actually, for one who's normally emotionless, he is genuinely angry at this. There are Fremen that come over and help you carry her. There is a procession. The second that you start it, everyone falls into place. And I just fall out and stay in the cavern by myself and separate myself from everybody because Hakeen is losing control of something he shouldn't, which is emotion and logic. And the old Sayadina puts her hand in the Reverend Mother's hand. And there is a warmth about her goes beyond being a desert dweller. It goes beyond being an older woman, a mother, a grandmother. There's something equally familiar and equally frightening about her. Reverend Mother takes her hand and holds it. You are thrust unwillingly into the other memory. All right. She rides it out. What do you see? I don't know. What do you what do want I... to see? <laughs> Am I thrust into hers? You don't know where you are. Okay. Um... This, is, this is not Ben and Jezra territory. Okay. You are definitely in Fremen minds. Okay. There's chaos. Yeah. You can see sandstorms, lightning, but it's not lightning coming down from the sky. It's lightning arcing upwards from the sand. There's a worm coming. Oh my goodness. And she tenses a little bit as she sees that. And she's going to pull through to see what the Fremen are doing as this happens. The Fremen of Arakeen, the Arakeen Plateau, are leaving. They, you can see all of them as a whole looking up, seeing these strange devices hovering on the, the edge of their yellow 
orange sky in the interim space between that and the blackness of the vast chaos that is space. There is this overwhelming fear and a desire to just turn away. And then you see the sand start to pile up wave after wave as the, the worm is about to break the surface tension. And is this happening near the plateau? No. You are somewhere in the sand. There's no rock formation around you. It is almost like for lack of a better word, the, the Fremen other memory is a sandstorm. Yeah. It is a constant running or accepting of whatever worm is coming to end the vision. You can feel like you can pull one more thing before this worm breaks. Where does, where does Della want to see? What does Della want to see? She wants to see her daughter. You recognize the opulence, gold trimmed banners, food, drink, laughter, the smell of richness money. She's on Carino. She's with her husband. And there is a look of fear in her eyes as around the table are faces that are covered by the sandstorm. Except for one that just drops the stomach out of Della's body. Because it's the same Reverend Mother that framed you. And then the worm breaks the sand. Lightning arcs between its maw, the sky, between you, the sand. And as it swallows you, you come to at this ceremony for the departed. There is a low hum as the Fremen bid farewell to what is a respected member of their society. You can see all of them are trying not to cry. They want to save their water. Am I still holding the elders' hands? No. Interesting. She, she, she is, has moved on. She yeah. is leading the, the, the hum. Hmm. She closes her eyes and just listens to the hum, calming herself. She must not fear. The Fremen ask Thera if she wants to allow the off-worlders to stay for the reclamation of water. They've witnessed the ceremony. They might as well see what we do. They must understand once and for all if we are to be cannon fodder or regulations or whatever. 
that we are more than just one drop of water. We can become okay. an ocean. And this question is for Junie. How do you think, how do you picture, how do you put into words the ceremony that is the reclamation of water? Oh, fuck. Um, there is no wrong or right answer here. Oh, I know, I know. I just, oh. Hi, sledgehammer, emotions, just push. I have to say is, yeah, hold on, excuse me. I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like my color? Thank you. Um, for her, being she was a Saradina, it was calm, reverent. Um, any other Saradinas would have probably have helped put her in, looking to Sarah to make sure that this is what she wants, making sure that this is what is going to happen and if she's okay. Um, there would take one thing, and that would have been the ring her mother wore. There's only one piece of jewelry make her mother ever had. And she'll put that on her finger and let them do a soft, quiet hum as they reclaim her lot of water. And she'll just stand there and try to be as stoic and as unmoving as possible, kind of like the rocks. And whoever is there to witness it sees that there is, or as back world of a planet as Arrakis is seen in the rest of the Imperium, there's something scientific about this. Even in its beauty and its simplicity and its necessity, there's still something scientific about what they're doing, how they go through the motions, how they reclaim the steel suit. There's a reverence to all of it. This is a society that has accepted that death is a part of everyday life. And there's a respect here above all else there is honor in every motion nothing is wasted and as the reverend mother and antares and rena are witness to something that most off-worlders will never see in another part of the siege the keen is going through the motions stands to stands kata to kata just what is going on in his mind and as i go through them i am re thinking through all of the reasons i was taught them blade up the inside of the thigh sever the artery Step to the side, slash the back of the ankle, cut the tendon, sever the tendons of the knee, hand strike to the back of the knee, dislocate, tear the ACLs, a small blade in the underside of the armpit to bypass armor. It is, and not fighting as a lot of people understand it, it is all quick kill methods. It is all ways to end a fight using whatever means necessary. And I am cycling through them all to shed the anger that I had built up that I do not like because it taints my calculations. You're not sure if it's somewhere around your third or fourth go at this, but you start to see the shadow of Aguri Biles. Or would you, do you think that it would be Aguri or would you think that it'd be Rear Talk who taught you your self defense, your assassination techniques? It would have been Rear Talk because he was the face dancer trainer as well. 
-hmm. would have been the one who taught me probably why he would hope I would be able to the one to kill everybody. So you see him, he is not an imposing figure, thin, wiry, almost like a Steve Buscemi type of frame. But he moves with celerity, with purpose that his body should not have. But you can see him clear as day in his training outfit. The siege washes away for the compound where everything was drilled into you, where the daily tests were ramped up. And I reach up, check to see if I'm bleeding from where I'd failed to properly do one of my moves during my training and was cut for it. You are. I told you during the training, one day I will kill you. I suspect you've been told that by most of the trainees at some point. I will kill him. And you can see the handle in his arm, not the blade arm, but his offhand. And there's just that very thin sliver of that synth wire whip that he uses, that he just used on your neck to drive a lesson home. And a smile comes over his face and you see his eyelids close in one direction before closing in another and then they open. Of course, he's had surgeries to perfect his senses. He trains face dancers. He needs to be better than who he's training. Hmm. And he just motions with his chin. I can show you where the mass grave is of everyone that's failed in that same promise. But you would think less of me if I didn't try. You've trained me to be something for a reason. Just like the pain is to teach me that pain should not be part of my calculations. It is a distraction. There's hope for you yet. Again, and as you start what must be your fifth or sixth repetition, everything is drowned out. You're back in the siege. The tunnels echo with the hum of the ceremony. And you can hear the people shuffling back. I'll put my blade away and then resume my normal posture. And as the funeral procession comes back into the main chamber, this is a good point to stop for tonight. Woo, everybody. We survived. Another episode. And uh, by the silence you hear from the other players. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I will let you have your timeout or your uh, parting words there, Ravnus Archon. Uh, 
I, I needed a moment. I needed a moment. Uh, <laughs> this was heavy. This is heavy we all need a moment. <laughs> I need a cigarette, you know, y'all. I'm fine. <laughs> a moment. I'm going to go get some alcohol after this shit. <laughs> fuck you, Archon. I love you, but fuck you. I'm fine. Wow. Perfectly fine. Yes. Perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I did. Like I said at the beginning, it is an honor and a privilege to sit at this table. Uh, I am forever grateful that you have allowed me to take you on this journey. And I hope that when we get to the end, that it will all have been worth it. That's a hell of a story. I'm loving it. On a personal note, I would like to point out, uh, we had not worked out any part of my real background. (laughs) So uh, mad props to you for rolling with my improv in that scene and making it actually, it tells a bit about Hakeen in that case. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was a back and forth we had. <laughs> yep. Wow. I was going to. I had something to answer, but then I thought, ah, no, let's not push this too far. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Hakeem to decide he's going to teach you the lesson yeah. of, of of that. Yeah, I didn't want to to create like a, a actual strain too much the 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 relations between our characters i mean we still have some episodes to go and you I wouldn't might have killed have... you i would have put the blade <laughs> to you in a way that would show you you would have been dead mm. because you were thinking about what i could or could not do or would would or would not do instead of what i could or could not do <laughs> big difference or in calculations actually more like what you should or should not do but <laughs> and also everyone i'm fine I'm good. I, yeah, I had like, to do a, a private yeah. check-in yeah. with Junie in Zoom just to make sure she was okay. Because I was like, God damn, those feels seem real. Let me check on that. Yeah. <laughs> we, take, my parents. we take check-ins I'll, and uh, the 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 uh, player safety seriously. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna check in after the after the we cut it. So. Oh no, I was looking at her facial I'm expression. Glad. I'm like, okay, th- I, I know that emotion. Let me check and make sure she's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. That is grief. <laughs> Honey, I'm Irish and German with a big ass family. It I happens. Know I know. Uh, <laughs> Same. Attended a funeral today. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Damn, the timing. I know, right? <laughs> That's why Will asked me before we got started, are you okay today? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I see what you did there. Damn. <laughs> Kill my dad. He's killed my mom in front of me. Good thing I don't have any brothers or sisters. I haven't killed your dad. Watch out. That's yeah. Coming. Uh-huh. Yeah. I heard that word. I haven't killed your dad yet. yet. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, he's dad. not going to kill him. He's going to make me kill him. Watch. <laughs> Uh huh. So 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 my mom. I want to find this bitch m- running around looking like me though. I want to find face the dancer. Dancer. Yeah, I want to find that? the fucking face dancer. I want that bitch. <laughs> they could literally least, be in the seats right now, and you wouldn't. Know I it. know That's the problem. At least Antonius until, until did not know what I said about him because mom died. Yep. Some secrets are safe. Yep. Oh. And there with the internet. Oh, wow. Brazil. And Brazil. And Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, what I'll do, I can fix that until he comes back. We do this. And then we fix Ravner's Archon, which is real easy for me to do. I just click a button. Yes, there a lot of emotional damage. Damn. There we go. Uh, no, we don't see. We Ravner's don't see Archon. Will. Everyone got reordered. Hang on. Apparently, I'm on top There we of go. There we, oh. go. there we go. I mean... <laughs> to be. All right. Okay, I guess I'll do my outro yeah, here, do everybody. Yeah, the outro, hon. Um, uh, thank you <laughs> to Ravnus Archon for running this game. This is some emotional shit, and I love it. Uh, in case anyone's worried, no, this doesn't. I don't get affected in games like this. So there's only one game that has ever affected me. And take three game. aggravated willpower damage. I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, and I thank my fellow players. I do thank my fellow players for this because this has been great. Go ahead and let him back in and I'll okay. hide this. We got him coming back. There we Hello. go. And he's back. We're turning back on. There we go. He's back. 
There we go. So if you'd like to join us on our Discord, everybody, uh, so you know the Discord is where this show was cast from. Everybody here is a member of our Discord. Everybody here uh, jo joined up willingly for this game, of all things. Uh, they decided to apply when he Some first folks have all. never sat at Will's table before. We I have not know if they will again. <laughs> oh, no. I'm fine with it. Emotional <laughs> damage. But uh, this is... Uh, well, this is what the Discord is. It's where we talk about games like this. We cast our shows. We do weekly Zoom hangouts. Uh, this week it is uh, going to be tomorrow night because we did it Friday last week. So it'll be after Tiss ends her stream or if she's not streaming tomorrow because I forget whether she is or not. Uh, it'll be in the afternoon so it's more European friendly. Uh, we also do non-streamed community games every once in a while. It, it's been blood on the clock tower. At some point we're going to do a murder mystery party. It's just things are busy. Uh, if you want to catch your back episodes, like see the rest of the Dune series, see, <coughs> sorry, I had to cough, uh, Kids on Bikes that just ended, or Windy City, our vampire, or Demon, or Mage that Ravenous Archon run, uh, Werewolf that he was a player in. I mean, we've got a lot of content. Watch our, our back episodes on YouTube. Monster Hearts that he was a player in. Yep. <laughs> So uh, catch the back episodes. If you want to see some D&D &D and Call of Cthulhu, you can pop over to Ishvel for that. That is uh, Tiss, who is our British uh, storyteller and dungeon master and GM and everything. Uh, you can pop over to hers. If you want to check out our friends, check out our friends list. These are another other amazing content creators. One of them is right there, which is uh, Thara Juni Von Etch. She's uh, the RPG table. She does Vampire on Saturdays. And then, of course, Ravnos Archon, when he's not streaming with us, he streams on his channel, though here lately he seems to be streaming with us so much, you know, you might as well just, you know, bring your players over and just keep going, you know, <laughs> just, just point it out, you know, just, you know, just saying, uh, you want to uh, get some studio merch. We've got merchandise. Uh, we don't have anything for Dune, but I'm sure, you know, there's other stuff. You can get lots of studios uh, stuff. If I die, I may have to get my own T-shirt uh, made that I was in a Ravnos Archon game and, and died. All I got was this T-shirt. I may have to special make that merch just for that one. Um, if you want to support the players, so you know, everybody, bits and donations, they go to the players, not to the studio. Bits and donations are a way to show your appreciation to the players for all the hard work and the costuming and the, the, the time they spend doing this. I mean, we love doing it. We don't do it to make money. But, you know, if you want to give something to them, feel free. It's up to you. But do not put yourself in a financial bind to do it. We are insistent upon that. Uh, we don't want to see everybody hurt themselves uh, financially just to give a little money to the players. If you want to support the studio, well, that's what subscriptions here on Twitch are. And if you don't like that Twitch is a pimp and take half the money, you can pop over to our coffee and give that way. Because, so. come on, Mama buys costuming stuff, too. I bought yep. a poncho because I did not have any earth tone clothes to layer. Okay? <laughs> We're not in this to make money. We will never lock any of our content. No behind subscriptions or paywalls or Patreons. That is not what we do. Uh, any money you give is out of the goodness of your heart that you want to give something. But if not, don't worry. We understand not everybody can afford that. Not everybody wants to do that. And that's your choice. We do this because we love telling these stories. And uh, I think for once I got it all again, so I could turn it over to my wife for the schedule. Excellent. So thank you so much for joining us for Dune this evening. Good Lord, if these sands get any more blood soaked, Arrakis ain't going to be spicy. It's going to be fucking drowning in blood. Um, <laughs> wonder if the worms can process that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern as Tiss runs Call of Cthulhu 7E. It is London Esoteric Society. Her group of investigators are based in Victorian London, and they are investigating all kinds of sus cult stuff, and they want to summon elder beings, and they're going insane and burning through their luck like it's burning a hole in their pocket. And you... <laughs> 
So needless to say, it is a fun romp of a game that runs about three hours on Saturday afternoons at 3 p.m. Eastern. Join Tiss, our amazing British GM, as she runs that game with her crazy, campy investigators. Um, And then on Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern, we have Windy City After Dark Season 7, Episode 8, I believe. I cannot keep track of all the episodes because of all the games I'm in. Um, Yes. And that one is going to be called, because I know we have a name for it. I forget what it was, but yeah. I'm going to pull it up. Hang on. It's in the super secret cast chat. Night of Revelations. Join us at 5 p.m. Eastern as this coterie gets some fucking juicy intel. Juicy. Juicy stuff. For real. And some, um, yeah, needless to say, it'll sucker punch some feels at, at, and, and send you on a bit of a roller coaster. It was a hell of a session to record last night. I barely got any sleep afterwards. I think I went to sleep at like 4 a.m. <laughs> so, yeah, Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Check that out. And then on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we have Demon the Fallen, The Road to Hell. That is going to be episode... N- 10. 10. Of- With a giveaway. With a giveaway, episode 10 of our first season, with a giveaway of the hardback book, the hard copy book of Demon the Fallen. So Season finale, everybody. Yep, season finale. The first season is coming to a close. That group of demons, that that choir of demons, just took out a baby Earthbound. Barely. I mean, well, I didn't get that hurt, but it was tough. Until my character brought out the sledgehammer. Mama playing, Mama playing the Fallen Angel Thor. <laughs> Thorina. <laughs> yeah, so come see on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern when the choir gets together and deals with any kind of fallout or aftermath of that because that that didn't that turned out to not be exactly what was expected either. So we'll see where they go from there. Um, And then, of course, we will be back here on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern for our next session of Dune, Blood Soaked Sands. Join us 8 p.m. as we... Good Lord. I don't even know what we're doing from here. We'll find out (laughs) one way or another. (laughs) This has hit me so heavy. I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck we're doing. I'm just like, okay, I want to give Thora a hug. (laughs) Hakeem's just going to need to go on another murder spree for just a little while. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how he copes. (laughs) (laughs) I think you'll do my siege. If anyone else is there, we'll kill him. You know, that's what it is. And as always, everybody, when we end these streams, please take your mental health seriously. Check in on family, check in on friends, check on loved ones, check in on all those around you. Please make sure they're okay because a lot of people aren't. And all it takes is just somebody reaching out and saying, hey, are you okay? Are you all right? And a lot of times that's just what somebody needs to hear. That friendly voice, that that message that somebody gives a shit. And if you do suffer from mental health issues, like many of us do, myself included, uh, first of all, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with admitting that it's, I mean, there's a stigma that shouldn't be there and it really shouldn't because we all suffer from mental health issues at some point in our life. We all have things we have trouble dealing with and getting through. And sometimes we all need help. No one can get through life on their own. So please take your own mental health seriously. And if you feel you can't talk to somebody around you, In chat, there's a list of numbers you can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can reach out to them and they will be the other person on the end of the line to help you through it and to talk you through what you're dealing with because everybody, mental health is health. And if you don't take it seriously and you don't get it addressed, uh, you're hurting yourself overall. And, you know, we want everyone to be with us. So please uh, take my word seriously on that. And I'll turn it over to my wife for her portion of her outro, because we have our own uh, divvied up outro portions. All right, y'all. I, Mama McStabber, I am the nicest mean nurse you'll ever meet. 
I am brutal at times, but I'm doing it because I care. Truly. If I didn't care, I wouldn't say shit. Um, <sighs> hospitals are overrun. Understaffed and overrun with patients. Please get your COVID vaccines. There was a patient that one of my coworkers was trying to help that went into the hospital for COVID and died. That quick. Just that quick. Please get your vaccines. COVID does kill people. It's murdered over a million people in our country. Please get your COVID vaccines. Um, also, make sure your other vaccinations are up to date because polo's making a comeback, y'all. Polio, sorry, not polo. Polio is making a comeback. And um, y'all know I'm going to say that, you know, reproductive health is a human right, that health care is a human right, that abortion is health care, vote blue, all that stuff. But I'm going to give you a new reason to vote blue today. If you are or know someone that you care about that is a veteran, you really don't want to vote conservative or GOP. Out of spite. They legit voted no across the fucking party on a bill that like 30 of them had voted yes on prior to a technicality in it getting corrected. Nothing in the actual bill got changed. Just a technicality of the bill got changed. They changed their minds when it came back for vote. To and so, own the libs. To own the libs. And this bill was going to ensure that veterans that had been exposed to burn pits and other things like that got the funding for specialized care that they need to recover and recuperate as best they can. Republicans voted no to that. It didn't pass because of them. So it is a big problem. They use veterans as pawns. They claim, oh, you know, we respect the vets. No, they don't. They only want to use soldiers in wars that make them profits. And they don't give a flying fuck about vets once they're home. Vets often are homeless, often have a lot of mental health concerns, and often are prone to suicide. And do you think the Republicans give a giant flying fuck about that at all? Not one bit. So vote blue. If you can't vote blue for women's rights or LGBTQIA rights, vote for the fucking veterans, please. Because don't nobody seem to give a shit about them on the GOP side. Only during election year. Or only during the presidential presidential election. election. That's it. That's the only time a Republican gives a goddamn about veterans. As a veteran, I take it personal. Yeah, yeah, you should. As your wife, I take it fucking personal. As a nurse who has cared for more veterans than I can fucking count, I take it personal. So seriously, y'all. Everywhere, wherever you are in this country, vote blue in November, please. All the way down to your fucking city council, vote blue. Because they start at the local level and they work their way up to federal. So vote blue. And fuck Putin. And fuck Putin. With a chainsaw. Anally. No, with a shattered glass dildo. No, I'd like chainsaw better. <laughs> we each have our own preference. <laughs> Fine, as long as we're not doing it for charity. No, no we won't no, do no, it for no, charity. No. Okay. And as I always have been saying here lately, please, everybody, be Mr. Rogers. Uh, don't be a Satine Phoenix or Jameson Stone. Don't be a toxic, narcissistic abuser. We don't need that in the TTRPG space. Uh, we fought out of those days in the 80s and 90s, and we don't need to go back to it. 
please don't be like that. Be a, a Mr. Rogers, be a good neighbor. And uh, as the namesake of the studio, I think these players and the storyteller or GM here, the judge of the change, Ravnus Archon, for this amazing game. And uh, I thank all of you viewers for being here. Good night, everybody. We will see you next time. Good night, everyone.